Hello and welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast. We are continuing to go through God's Word, one chapter, one book at a time. And uh, we're picking up again today at the 22nd uh, chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Hey, thank you so much for joining us uh, again here. We are over uh, 2,000 views. Uh, and uh, I know that's not a whole lot in YouTube world. I get it, trust me. But <laughs> for me, I, I didn't. I didn't think it would. It, you know, we'd have this type of uh, uh, of traffic. So really appreciate all the listeners. Hey, if it's a blessing to you, make sure you uh, subscribe, share, and all those things that help the videos go go out further, so that the word of God. Uh, reaches further. I'm called the Bible guy, not because I'm trying to hide myself, but because it's not important who I am. The thing that's important is that the word of God gets out. So um, yeah, help me do that if you can. Uh, And so we'll open up with a quick word of prayer and then we'll pick up at Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Lord, we thank you so much for uh, just allowing us to continue to dive in and dig into your word. Uh, We're seeing the king and the gospel of the kingdom move through on his way to the cross uh, where he will save the people from their sins. So we thank you so much, God. We pray that each one uh, that listens today will receive the blessing that you've intended for them to have. We pray it, of course, in Jesus name. Amen and amen. And so we're picking up here at the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Now, we've already seen our Lord Jesus. Uh, starting to let these uh, these Jews uh, and the leaders of the Jews, the, the the chief priests and the elders, know that because they were rejecting him, that the kingdom was being taken away from them as a people and a nation. They are no longer going to be God's only chosen people. Uh, they're refusing to accept the Son, and even now making and having plans to kill the Son of God means that not only will they no longer be blessed, but instead great punishment is coming. And we're going to see that in our parables. And so he's going to start hammering this point home to them until it's crystal clear. You don't accept me. You will be lost. And I hate to break it to somebody listening right now, but the same is true for you and for me. We don't accept him. We will be lost. It really is that simple. This is the simple Bible study podcast. And so then that's as simple as it gets. Now, we're going to see that very well in this in this parable here. So we're we're picking up at chapter 22. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables. Again, parables are short stories um, that reveal uh, a hidden truth. And said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding uh, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Uh, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatlings are killed. All things are ready coming to the marriage. Now, in this parable, we've been introduced to several characters here. The first character, the king, represents God the Father. And he's calling the people uh, to come to this, this wedding feast, to come to this thing he's prepared. Now, the people that he's invited represents the nation of Israel, the Pharisees, the chief priests, the elders, all of this nation. And he's invited them to come and celebrate his son, the wedding of his son to his bride, which would be uh, the kingdom. And so the son, of course, represents Jesus Christ, the son of God, the father. And then he he was calling them to come. Uh, Like today, he's calling you and me to come, you see. And so uh, the the servant in verse four, now this is another character. He represents the Holy Spirit. (laughs) He's the the servant goes out and calls people to come uh, uh, to this wedding and calls people to come in. Jesus said of the Holy Ghost at John 16 and um, 16 and verse eight. We'll read that here, verses 8 through 11. It says, uh, uh, let's start at verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, this is what he'll do. He will reprove the world of sin 
the world of sin, you see, and of righteousness and of judgment. We'll just read that seventh and eighth verse. So basically the work of the Holy Spirit is to reprove or correct people of their sin and to call them to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit right now is, is with that guy sitting in front of his television, not even thinking about God, but the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to that man to call him to Jesus. He's probably speaking through that commercial, maybe the Miller Lite commercial he's watching, <laughs> but he's using something to call that man to let him know he needs a savior. Amen. And so at uh, now that we got these characters established, uh, we can go back to the parable. parable. Now in Matthew, we left off at verse 4, uh, 22 and 5 says, but they made light of it, those that were invited, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You see, they had other things to do that were more important than this wedding. They, 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 they were basically doing what a lot of people do today, and that is blaspheming the Holy Ghost. They were counting as nothing the invitation to come. That's what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. It's ignoring him, mocking him uh, as he's calling you and trying to convict your heart and, refu- and you refusing to yield. Don't put the Holy Spirit off, friends. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Verse 7 says, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, angry, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Hmm. Do you know this literally happened to the Jews? History tells us in the year 70 AD, just about 40 years after the uh, these people rejected Christ, that the Roman emperor Titus and his army surrounded the city of Jerusalem and killed or enslaved most of the people in it burned the temple to the ground, changed the name of the city, uh, and basically tried to wipe off the very memory of this people from the earth. That's documented history, friend. (laughs) And these descendants of Abraham, these people of, uh, these these Jewish people had no city from that day, from that year, AD 70, all the way up until 1948, uh, when they were regathered, just as the Bible says that they would be. But the point here is, friends, don't play with God. <laughs> I'll say that again. Do not play with God. He is serious about his word and his calling. When you hear his voice, when you hear him trying to call you, yield, friends, give in to him. And so at verse eight, it says, then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden or invited were not worthy. Listen to this verse nine. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid or invite them to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered to many, get, gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And friends, that's uh, that's us. <laughs> that here we found ourselves, you and me listening right now, we found ourselves in this parable. We were in the how the highways, outside, nowhere to go. He called us in. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <laughs> oh, that's the gospel right there. He said, go find them all and invite them to come in. Those that are outside of the kingdom, those who were uh, 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 far off, as the book of Ephesians says about us. Listen to Paul at Ephesians 2 and uh, and and 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh or close by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who have made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. And I'll leave it there. But the point is, you and I have been brought into this kingdom by the goodness of God, by the by his mercy and his, not because we deserve it, but because he is good. And I love what it says here. It said, it said here, go out and find people both bad and good. <laughs> I, I remember I met a man, uh, it was a while back, but he was, uh, 
telling me how it was very easy for him to become a Christian, he said. He, he said, I, you know, I never drank and I never did drugs and I never joined gangs. And so it was an easy transition for me. I just simply, you know, started going to church. And, and I remember thinking, I, I, brother, I don't know if you really are saved <laughs> uh, because it sounded like he thought he was already good. He thought he was he was uh, he was good. In fact, he was too good. You see, <laughs> I, I get a, a kick out of people when I hear them say I never drank. I didn't smoke. I didn't go to nightclubs. I didn't do this and I didn't do that. Brother, that's all fine and dandy what you didn't do. But it's not what you didn't do that's the problem. It's what you did do that had you on your way to hell. You see, <laughs> you weren't too good to be saved. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You that think you are good, you need him to save you too. It says the good need to come and the bad. I tell you, 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 somebody listen to me, you think you've done something so bad. You haven't done anything so bad that he doesn't want you to come in too. He doesn't want you to come to him as well. I don't care what it is or who it was with. He says, whosoever will let him come the bad and the good. And verse 12 says, uh, 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 verse 11 now says, and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. We got a problem. Uh, uh, and he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. <laughs> we, we, we got a problem. Everything was going good here in the wedding party. Everybody had come in from the highways, the, and the good and the bad. But then the king comes across a fellow who came in but won't wear the wedding garment. Since everybody came in from the highways, we can assume properly that nobody who came in had the right wedding clothes because they were called in immediately from the highway. So it's obvious that the king would have supplied everyone the clothes that they needed for the wedding. But this guy is sitting here and has refused to put on what the king gave out. You see, the king said, anybody who wants to come in is welcome. Anybody who wants to come, all are welcome. Come unto me. Yes, come in. But you, got, but you do have to change. <laughs> and this is how God has set up his kingdom. Come as you are. Yes, come as you are. Well, of course. But you've got to change. <laughs> There must be a change in garments. There must be a change in life. Let's, let, let's stop lying to people about God. We're saying Jesus loves you, and he does. That's true. But, but, but this just come in and do you stuff, that, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. You've got to come in and surrender your will to his. You've got to do what he says. There are people here that are uh, sitting in church every Sunday. They look saved and holy. They, they, they're wearing the right hats and the right suits and the right gator shoes and all that. And yet won't change. Still backbiting, still gossiping, still lying, still lusting, still committing adultery, still uh, 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 getting in the pulpit and lying to the people because they don't even believe what they're saying. Still stealing from folks. <laughs> uh, they might have the right outer garments on but they have not accepted the garments that the king has given for them to wear. You see, the king says, you need a new garment. Well, 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 well what, is, what is the garment? What, what do you need to wear uh, to come into this wedding feast, uh, to be united to the, king, uh, to, uh, to the king and his son? Well, at Romans 13 and 14, uh, we read here, let's, let's back up to 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness. That's a wild and lustful life, not in strife and envying. But listen to verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's the garment. You've got to put on Jesus and his righteousness. You have to put on Jesus into your heart. You have to wear Christ. He must be the one we wear. Take him everywhere you go. As the old song used to say, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. You're going to need him. 
You're going to need them everywhere you go. That's the main garment, friends. Now, here's another one at Romans uh, 3 and 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference. Righteousness, faith, those are garments, friends. <laughs> That's what you got to wear. Uh, to please the king. That, 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 that's what you got to come up. Now, now, my mother, my mother, mama, mama listens. Hey, mama. <laughs> mama, the Bible mom once preached a message about a spiritual makeover. And I believe she was telling folks about them garments there at Galatians, uh, the, the fifth chapter. Let's read a few of those. At Galatians uh, chapter five. Uh, starting at about verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. Those are the types of garments <laughs> you have to wear to please the king, the fruits of the spirit. You have to change, though. You have to change to be accepted. I, I was at a church not too long ago, and, and this was a very uh, like traditional church. And there was a, a very good uh, preacher uh, who was up speaking. And as the preacher was speaking, a, a young man walked in off the street. And I could tell he really liked what he was hearing and the message was blessing him. And I kept my eye on him because I liked the fact that he was, uh, he seemed to be blessed by the message. Well, a few minutes later, after he walked in, one of the, one of the uh, servants or the deacons came to him and politely asked if he would take his hat off because they got a rule at this church, as they do at a lot of, you know, more traditional churches that you don't wear hats inside the sanctuary. Well, the young man, he didn't like it. <laughs> and so he got up and, and, he, and he just left. He, he was done with it. Now, I'll be honest. When I first saw that, I wasn't happy with that deacon or that church. In fact, if I'm just being honest, this is this is the Bible Guy podcast. I can be honest. <laughs> I think that whole rule they have about not wearing a hat is just stupid in our day. OK, <laughs> and if it were me, I would have left him alone. But you know what? I thought about that later. And even though I still think that the hat rule is dumb, don't get me wrong. I thought that this young man was being blessed by that word. He was being blessed by hearing the word of God and all he needed to do to continue to hear it and be blessed by it was to take off his hat and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> and if he wouldn't take off a hat, he probably wouldn't be able to, he probably wouldn't be willing to give up his sin. He probably wouldn't be able or be willing to change his heart. He probably wouldn't be willing to stop lying or, or committing fornication or, 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 or whatever it is that he needed to change in order to be acceptable to the king. You see here at verse, uh, at, at, at the verse here at uh, 22, 14, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. He said, many are called, and they all were, all of them from the highways were called in. Come on, no, no restrictions, but few are chosen. And that's chosen to be and stay in the kingdom. Few are chosen to be to be in and to stay in the kingdom because few are willing to do what he says the way he says do it. <laughs> we thank you so much for joining us. We pray that this lesson was a blessing for you and we'll see you again next time. Until then, God bless you.